stream. So now it will save it and we'll have the whole play on, on film so they can watch it if they want to. Just make sure you do not get in their room. It's more important that they have room than us because they are the big deal. <laughs> Jeremiah Holmes, I think he's backstage getting ready, and also my wife Laura Horner, who is our hair and makeup volunteer director. So they both are an integral part of our um, performance this evening. So um, I want to recognize all of the kids that are involved in our show. We have 36 cast members and we have 14 crew members, so we have 50 total um, students that have been part of this production. So we're going to call them out to the stage um, and we have Hold your applause until after each group we go freshmen and sophomores and juniors and seniors. So our freshmen in the show this year include Kevin Aranda, Antonio Arner, Connor Carpenter. Samuelson, Peyton Schoen, and Olivia Sheldon. in the high school, so we have 18 from that class. Our juniors, and juniors, you can step right in front of the freshmen and sophomores. Um, Mercedes Holmes, Hannah Fries. <laughs> All right, and we have our seniors. Seniors get a flower tonight to um, give to a parent if they're here. Um, and I'm going to do our seniors by how long they've been part of our production. So, and kind of tell you what they did across their four years. Some of you have been following them for the four years, some of you are new to this. And so, across the four years of high school, um, our seniors, as freshmen, took part of a play called These Shining Lives, which was about girls that worked in a radium watch company um, and were poisoned um, and then fought um, the government and fought. The, the company to try to get um, payment for that. Whitney, could you turn down the music for me? I don't have my, my music person up here. If you just go all the way to the right side. Oh, there you go. Perfect. All right. So, and then as sophomores, we did a comedy called The $39 Man. It was, a, it was about a um, superhero that went to the sewer to fight Dr. Drano, um, which was a superhero comedy. 
And then last year we did Prodigal, which was a modern adaptation of the biblical Prodigal Son story. And then this year we are doing The Coffee Pot Is On, which I'll tell you about in a little bit. So, our one year, our first year speakers, uh, first year crew and cast members, I should say, Riley Kenny. Joplin Smith, who is one of our canteen workers. Jackson Myers, who is one of our crew members running some lights. The crew loves being on the stage, it's their favorite thing. We have some two-year members. The first is Vinny Cheatham. Last year he was in the Friend Ensemble, and this year he is a soldier. <laughs> Next we have Brady Fredrickson. He has been on the crew last year and this year. Michaela Dunmire last year was in the Friend Ensemble, and this year she is part of our crew. And Hayden Mount, for two years, has been part of our crew, basically in charge of our makeup and hair. Okay, we have three-year members. Anaya Souls, when she was a sophomore, she was a rat. Last year, she was an evil spirit, and this year, she is Elaine Wright, one of the canteen workers. Carson Glenn, as a sophomore, Carson was also a rat. Last year, he was in the Friend Ensemble, and this year, he's an officer. And he is the senior class president. <laughs> Carson Tuxorn is the third year member. He has been on the crew, and then he was on the crew, and this year he's on the crew. <laughs> now we have four four-year members. Our first one is Hannah Beeler. As a freshman, she was one of the workers in the workroom. As a sophomore, she was a rat. As a junior, she was an evil spirit, and this year she is Ray Wilson Slight. Next we have William Werner. William, as a freshman, was in our crew. As a sophomore, he was the evil Dr. Drano. And he swore he'd never be in a serious play, and now he's been in two. Um, as a junior, he was Jesse Gardner, and this year he is the reporter Merle Jones. Marcus Ramsey. Marcus, as a freshman, played Billy Donahue, a little boy in blue pajamas. His mom was sick, and it was an amazing scene. As a sophomore, not only was he William Armstrong Custer, he was also a rat. And then as a junior, he was Josiah Gardner, and this year he plays Denver Wilson, and also an officer. And our last senior is Madison Fox. Madison, as a freshman, did the sound. As a sophomore, she did the sound. As a junior, she did the sound. And she's going to do the sound tonight. <laughs> so this, we have a couple missing tonight for a couple of conflicts, some sickness and things. So we have a, a few kids that didn't make it out here. But this is your cast and crew for the 2019 Bennett High School Play Production. <laughs> Seniors, you can take your flowers to your parent if you'd like to. Everyone else, head backstage. Mom, where are you? <laughs> All right, I'll continue while they're doing that. All right, so I want to talk to you just a real brief moment about tonight's script. Um, we are doing an adaptation of... Uh,
service member, if you stand for a moment to be recognized. So you might have noticed when you came in that our, our um, stage is completely empty. Uh, we do actually have a set, and we're going to set it up for here in a minute. Uh, play competition includes a set crew, and the set crew has to take care of making things work for the actors. The actors are nothing without their set crew. So we take this show on the road, and we put our set in the um, trailer that the Booster Club bought for the school a few years ago. We love the trailer. And we go to another school, and we unpack our set, and we put it together, and we have about eight minutes to set it up on the stage. Then we have about 30 minutes to perform the play, and then we have another seven minutes to get that set off the stage so that the next crew can get on there. And so one of the things we're going to do tonight is show you how that's done. And so my set crew, when I get done and I say go, they're going to hopefully efficiently uh, put the set up for you and get us ready for tonight. And then as soon as they have it set, then we will go right into the show. Um, when the show is over, there will be a, a short curtain call for the kids, and then they're actually going to exit through the side door and back out to the commons area, and they'll be standing around up there if you want to greet your, your kids or your grandkids or just let them know what you thought of the show. We'd appreciate that. So that will happen in the commons area after we're done. So as soon as the, the curtain closes, well, the curtain's not literally going to close, but when the lights go down um, and the kids are off, then the show is over in here, and you're welcome to stay and chat with the kids out in the commons area. Um, so... Without further ado, set crew, are you guys ready? They're getting there. Okay, we'll let them know they need to be ready now. So, all right, it's 9.10, and we'll see if we can have this set up by 9.18. We'll see how efficient they are. So, set crew, you may take the stage.
One crew member was in charge of that piece, and we were not sure. I'm Merle Jones. I sure appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Good afternoon, sir. I'm Ray Wilson Slight, and it's really no problem at all. It's just, I guess I don't really know what all the fuss is about. Why do you news folks want to talk about North Platte, Nebraska, 40 years after the war? With all due respect, this story, this journey you've led, it's more than just a gesture of kindness. It's the magnitude of your gracious support. It's more than we can ever repay. Thank you for your kind words. Let's start at the beginning. Tell me, how did this North Platte canteen idea become a reality? It was quite inadvertent, really, happenstance, but is it most of life? <coughs> Denver, I'm home. The ladies meeting after church took longer than expected. I had you. Shh, you're interrupting the 
music. Maybe it's your glue to that box. What's so interesting about some radio show? Just go away or I'm going to tell mom you're being annoying. All right, big shot. I'll be quiet. That'd be greatly appreciated. <laughs> Now, 
you all. You don't know how much this means to us. God bless you all. So that's where the idea was born. That's where I realized we had a job to do. If you could have seen the look in those boys' eyes, determination mixed with fear and such innocence, I just knew we had to do something. We knew some of them wouldn't be returning, and those who did would be changed forever. So you wrote a letter to the editor of the North Platte Daily Bulletin? I did that very nice. Editor, the Daily Bulletin. I don't know just how many of you went to meet the train when the troops went through our city one day, but those who didn't should have. To see the spirit and the high morale among those soldiers should certainly put some of us on our feet and make us realize that we are really at war. We can help keep up this soldier morale at highest peak. We can do our part. I would be more than willing to give my time without charge from this campaign. We who met this train which arrived at about five o'clock were expecting Nebraska boys. Naturally, we had candy, cigarettes, etc., but we very willingly gave those things to candy for. Smiles, tears, and laughter followed. Appreciation shown on over 300 faces. An officer told me that it was the first time anyone had met their train, and that North Pat helped keep the boys' spirits up. I say give back to our sons and our other mother's sons 100%. We can help this way, we can't help any other way. Signed, Ray Wilson, December 18, 1941. Now, let's get this game team up and running. The letter to the editor. What a patriotic inspiration. You know, I sure didn't see it that way. Was it difficult to get the canteen going? Oh my, no. You don't know Nebraska very well, do you? Forgive me, I'm not from around here. Let me tell you. When you ask for help, they come running. You see, it wasn't just the North Platte folks. We had folks hop on a train and come in from anywhere. From Ord to Kozad, from Scotts Bluff to Red Cloud, and most times in between. And we didn't have much notice when a train was coming. We'd be ready at any moment. Early on, we did get surprised by a train or two and had to rush to make things happen. Eventually, the railroads started to help us out. They sent a message down the line. All they could say was, the coffee pot is on! And we knew that we had kids coming our way soon. Everyone got in the place ready to take care of them like they were our own. It was like our state adopted these boys. You should have been there. And I made popcorn <coughs> Oh, 
Oh, I can promise you I'll write to you. <laughs> What's your name? Vera Ammerman. Well, I'm William Woodrow Butcher. It's nice to make your acquaintance. Likewise. Now, uh, come on, it's time to dance. Forgive me, ma'am, but I've been asked to inform you that your son, Thomas Wright, died here on the battlefield in France. On behalf of the Secretary of War, I extend to you and your family my deepest sympathy and your great loss.
days, Ms. Wilson. Thank you, Lena. It was so heartbreaking, but it truly reminded us why we were there. The four of us. Speaking of your boys, pardon me for asking, but what became of your brother, Denver? He became Lieutenant Colonel. His battalion helped Brigadier General Miltenberger's 134th Battalion in practice of fortune. You must be very <coughs> proud. Proud, but he mostly believed that he was fortunate enough to come home from the war. Oh, wow. Yes, I can imagine. And the canteen, for those men who came home, it provided for some lifelong connections, wouldn't you say? Oh, yes, there were many. And a few canteen marriages, too. William and Vera Dietrich being one of them. Vera faithfully wrote to William throughout the entirety of the war. My dearest William, the other day, one of the men that came through the canteen reminded me so much of you. Mischievous grin on his face, he makes with a little bit of uncertainty. Fear in his eyes. Have you lost that grin? I hope not. Vera, have I told you how much it means to me to get these letters from you? It's hard being away from family and home. You know, this war, I know it's worth fighting for, but I've just seen so many of my friends get hurt, <coughs> killed. Please, just keep praying for me to come home alive. I promise to pray for you as you do this most important work. The other day, one of the ladies got word that her son was killed. I pray that you come home safely. And also, William, I have been wondering, <coughs> have you gotten any taller? <laughs> Just so you know, I haven't gotten any taller. But you know what they say. Dynamite guns and small baggages. <laughs> 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 I 
understand how ten minutes. It's been forty years, yet you still remember. Well, how could I forget? I graduated from Brooklyn High School. I'd never been out of New York City before. I went down and signed up on a Monday, and they put me on a train heading west. I rode for three days and three nights, sitting up the inside sign, eating K rations, not taking a shower. But someone in the middle of the night said, North Platte, Nebraska. I'd never heard of North Platte before. I jumped off that train. And I ran into a place and I saw girls who looked like my sister or my cousin. And women who looked like my auntie or my mom. And they had all this food and they just, they gave it to us. And when we left, they hugged us. They said, soldier, we're praying for you. God bless you. And we were on that train, scared out of our minds, not knowing where we were going, not knowing we'd ever come back. But when we went to that place for 10 minutes, something went away. And we got back on that train. And in the middle of the night in France, with mortars coming down on our heads, when there was a lull in the fight, I heard a voice come out of the darkness and say, Wouldn't it be great if we were back in North Flat for five minutes? And we'd all agree. We'd all agree. You know, love chases away the fear. Yeah, I was an 18 year old kid, scared to death, not knowing where I was going, with people I'd never met before. Running into the unknown. But somebody loved me and was kind to me. I stood right here as Vera came running up with that grin on her face, about foom bowling in. And we danced. And for a brief moment, we forgot where we were headed. We forgot that we already missed back home. We forgot that some of us weren't coming home. And we smiled. And I got back on that train after saying goodbye to those lovely people with the bounty of North Platte in our laps. I tore through that popcorn bowl. Just like my viewers said, a tiny piece of paper with the her name and the address of the school was smack dab in the middle. Who were we on that train? We were the hope of the world at that moment. We were any kid on the street. We were all the same. We all wore the same uniform. We were everybody's kids. No, there's no way. I can forget that 10 minutes. And it take it all happened to you. Mr. Future, with all due respect, it happened because of the hearts of the people of Nebraska. It happened because even though we seemed to be safely tucked in the middle of this great nation, we felt hopeless, disconnected, and, and we wanted to do something to reach out, to support our voice. Right. <coughs> I didn't do anything special, just what I knew was right. The real thing belongs to you, Mr. Future. To all the boys who came through on the raid of war. Private Henry Benson, from Hartford, Connecticut. Private Bill Reagan, from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Denver Wilson, from North Platte, Nebraska. Thomas Wright, son of Elaine Wright, from North Platte, Nebraska. Thank you for your courage, for your bravery, through your determination while heading off to unknown foreign soil. You and thousands of others who stood right here, so many who didn't come home, are the real heroes. And your service is something I will never forget. Serving you a sandwich, pouring a pot of coffee, 
can't sing to Glenn Miller. It was the least I could do. It was what any Nebraskan would do for our boys. The car!